So Fallout 4 just got a brand new 1.3 gigabyte update on Xbox One and PS4 and a roughly 120 megabyte update on PC. And one of the interesting parts is this is actually a pretty different update than pretty much all of the other ones I've been talking about over the past year or so. As this update didn't just contain new Creation Club items, but it actually contained new updates to some of the older items, including new features for them. In some of my videos over the past week, I speculated that that could be a thing but it was probably very unlikely but no I was wrong. So some of the stuff you bought in the past may have new functionality now which is really interesting. So in this video what I'm going to be doing is actually breaking down all of those changes, what's new, what's not new. We also got an update to Skyrim and I'm going to have a video on that. I'm just not allowed to post it today. Like I'll probably have the video done later today but I can't upload it to this channel and I'll talk about why towards the end of this video. But one of the other interesting things is on the Skyrim side at least there was actually several changes and bug fixes for Skyrim. Several long withstanding bugs got patched and even though as of right now it doesn't seem like the same has occurred for Fallout 4, it does seem like this creation club or update to the game is very different than some of the previous ones. So one of the first big questions people had in regards to this update is if it would actually fix this operation could not be completed. This has been a bug in Fallout 4 and Skyrim on consoles for roughly 4 or 5 months now. It seemed like it showed up right around October to November and basically it makes it so without troubleshooting or trying to do various things, you cannot successfully download mods or Creation Club items, even though you can buy Creation Club items. For a long while now, Bethesda has made it quite clear they are working on a fix to this. I was speculating that with this update to the game, we'd likely see some news on that since it's been quite a few weeks and even months since some of the other postings. And this is kind of muddy, I'm not entirely sure if this is reportedly fixed or not, on the user side, people are saying they still are having issues, but on one of the main threads with people reporting being unable to download mods, we did get this post saying today's patch made improvements to the download system for mods. If you continue to have issues, please let us know here and include what sort of Xbox One you are using. So I'm not entirely sure. I've heard other reports that this new patch actually broke one of the troubleshooting fixes, which is odd. Like in other words, disconnecting your internet worked and then following the patch that no longer fixed the issue. Either way, at least as of right now, it seems like it isn't 100% for anybody. Some people still are unable to download mods, but hopefully we'll see more news on this in the days that follow. And outside of that, we have the two new Creation Club releases themselves, and this was actually pretty interesting to me. First and foremost, it's not obvious these even came out. When I tried to log in and buy them, I didn't think they were released because they're not on the featured item page, as you normally find those releases. Maybe that's just on my end and some kind of issue I'm having with my game, but either way, they are out and you just have to dig through the files to find them. Also along with this update, we did get the breaking of Fallout 4 script extender, but in just one day's time, they actually have updated that, although you may still have to wait for updates to your favorite mods that are dependent on this. For everything to function correctly, you need an update to script extender, but also all of the mods that depend on it. But otherwise, with this update, we got two new additions to the Creation Club, the first of which being Shroud Manor. I showed you guys some preview images of this mod a few days ago, and in effect, what it's going to do is give you one, a short quest line. I won't spoil too much, but in effect, there was some sketchy business going on at Shroud Manor, and there was an undercover cop that was placed there. And I gotta say, as far as this quest goes, even though it's fairly short, it just takes you to a couple locations, one of which being Shroud Manor, there are quite a few terminal entries, you certainly do get quite a bit of story with this, even though it is all written story, there's no voice lines or anything like that, and even though it was short, I definitely did enjoy it, and there's a bit of a twist ending with it. But as far as the tangibles added in with this, in addition to Shroud Manor itself, you also get a new weapon. It is very, very basic, it looks custom, but it does reuse sounds and animations, and that's pretty Pretty much all of the basic things you'd want with a weapon mod, some of the basic modifications, as well as the core and fundamental attachments. It's not groundbreaking, but at the same time, considering it's not even the main appeal of this larger creation, it certainly is a nice addition. I think aesthetically it looks pretty nice, and with some custom animations that you could download a mod for, or even some custom sounds that maybe somebody will make a mod for, this is very appreciated. And then outside of that, you get some custom outfits, which cool, but I think they're pretty forgettable. I don't picture myself ever using these after filming this video. But then that brings us to the main attraction, that with Shroud Manor itself. 
So in effect, one of the original guys that lived here was an aficionado of shroud collectibles, that being the silver shroud from Fallout 4 story. Along with this, you're going to get a ton of new workshop items, and you could find most of these populating the house itself. I'm not sure why, but in workshop mode, there wasn't actually a new menu added in, so you can't easily see all of the new additions, but if you walk through the house, there's several paintings, chairs, couches, things along those lines. But really to me, the main appeal of this was the house itself. It is really big and the entire thing is a workshop. So you can build in any of these rooms, customize it as you want, and it's probably one of the biggest house mods I've ever seen for Fallout 4. But since there was some gang business going on here, there's also several different secret entrances in here. You access these through hidden bookshelves, and this brings you to two separate secret attics, as well as the main appeal and part of the main quest, which is actually into the basement, which has its own vault that you can customize to your liking. And I would say the house itself is really the standout feature. For the 400 points or $4 they're asking for this, you get a decent amount of content. And out of the things we've seen in Creation Club thus far, this is not one of the ones that I would feel bad about paying four bucks for. Even though there are quite a few house mods for Fallout 4, not many are of the level of quality or detail or even size that this one is. But then next up, we actually do have the Heavy Incinerator. This is adding in the iconic weapon that did appear in Fallout 3's Broken Steel and also Fallout New Vegas. This has a short quest where you have to acquire it. There's actually a new power armor attachment implemented with this. Basically, it's two leg pieces that you can assign to raider power armor that makes it so you could walk through lava. But large in part, the quest was fairly short and forgettable, with the main appeal being the weapon itself. So first and foremost, the weapon does have some customization options, and one thing I will say about that is you could really make this look quite distinctively different, and that's not something you could say for a lot of heavy weapons in this game. And outside of that, it is definitely pretty fun to use. The visuals on this one, the actual fireballs themselves, look really nice. And without a doubt, while using this, you could set a fairly large area ablaze very quickly. And if you are curious, that little shield attachment that gives you all those custom dials doesn't actually do anything. They will always be at the same location. As of right now, it doesn't seem like there's another mod out there that does this better, but that's not because it's so good, it just seems like nobody has tackled that. If you have the money sitting on your account and you really like the look of this weapon, sure, go for it. I wouldn't say it's the most overpriced thing ever offered, but at the same time, especially in comparison to the other option with Shroud Manor, I would definitely be picking Shroud Manor over this one. But where this update to Fallout 4 and Fallout 4's Creation Club becomes unique is with what else it adds in. In addition to all of those other cool goodies, you actually get a bunch of updates to previously released creations. There's a comprehensive list posted on the Bethesda.net forums, but some of these are fairly notable additions, like the old school Gauss rifle now actually has its barrel glow as you fire it. It's a fairly minor change, but it's definitely nice. It makes it feel more unique and special. The Doom armor added in a while ago now has several different paint job options, so you can make it any of these colors. Some of the workshop packs also got new additions. Slocum's Joe has a new ceiling and light fixture, but the Modern Furniture Workshop Pack actually got several new things. It got three new types of walls, all being the same theme. You can get this new paneled wall and then a windowed version and a doored version to go along with it. But then also three new door types, all of them being fairly similar, just different colors. And then finally, three new roof options. So you can get the same paneled version or two wooden options of different colors. But two other really cool changes, now the Hellfire Power Armor, as well as the Chinese Cell Suit can be found in the Commonwealth. You may find an enemy using the Hellfire Power Armor, or alternatively may just find it on one of those power armors that is sitting at a power armor station. And the Chinese Stealth Suit now apparently will just appear randomly. There are several other minor changes to other things, but overall, this is cool. It is free updates to some fairly old content. Some of these things came out over a year ago at this point, and I'm honestly shocked to see some new content being added to some of these older creations. I don't feel like with any of them, it was like a make or break, like, oh yeah, that update makes it now worth buying. But for those who already own them, it definitely gives you a reason to maybe give it another try or re-download it on your character. But for several of these, like the Modern Workshop Pack, that was already a fairly good deal. It was one of the ones I recommended initially. And with these added features, it just is even more or worth the money. But then we have what is almost always one of the most exciting parts of this, a look ahead. When we get an update to Creation Club and Fallout 4, we oftentimes also get an update to the Creation Club file. 
There's a file known as the fallout4.ccc file that basically just contains the file names for everything in Creation Club thus far. And I'll be honest, the new additions this time around have me particularly perplexed. So there's one that seems fairly obvious, that being V-Suit. Maybe it's some kind of modified vault suit. There's been several mods to do this, and it honestly looks pretty cool. I think it'd be a cool thing to get through Creation Club, but the ones I'm really curious about are the next three. That's going to be VR Workshop 01, VR Desert Island, and VR Wasteland. Normally when we get these file names, I have some semblance of an idea of what it could be, but this time around, I have no freaking idea. A lot of people will probably immediately say, oh, it's probably related to virtual reality, but that doesn't really make that much sense. Why would some new virtual reality content be one, exclusive to VR, and two, come out in Fallout 4's Creation Club? Even though Fallout 4 VR is fairly successful, I just don't really see how that could fit in with the larger Creation Club store. Even further, I think the naming is interesting, especially the Desert Island and Wasteland one. Those sound like new locations, so you'd almost think it'd be some kind of new world space of some sort. Yet these are also all ESL files. Effectively, ESL files are a little bit smaller, so typically when they add in new world space or new houses or something like that, it'll be an ESM file. Take for example Shroud Manor, you could also find that in here and it is labeled as an ESM file, but these aren't. So that makes me think if they're a new world space, they're probably something relatively small. And then finally, the VR Workshop 01 is by Bethesda, while the other two are by a mod author that we have seen in this before. I really never mention the names of the mod authors because sometimes people could be kind of toxic about that kind of thing, or if the mod author hasn't announced they're in the program. Either way, the person who's developing this is very talented. I've loved almost all of his mods, so it is something to look forward to. I've pretty much loved everything he's put out in Creation Club also, even if the price wasn't always just right. So I'm really curious. I don't really know. Let me know in the comments down below. What is your speculation? What do you think these might correspond to? Outside of that, for those of you wondering why I can't post the Skyrim update video today, it's actually due to this policy YouTube has. So in effect, on YouTube, if you post four videos within a 24-hour period, the fourth video won't be sent to subscribers. So yesterday, both of my uploads ended up being late because the DLC for Fallout 76 came out fairly late in the day. So I uploaded at 7 p.m., then I uploaded a follow-up video at 9.30 p.m. So that means I can't double upload today before 9.30 p.m. I would have to wait until 9.31 to post that Skyrim update video. For that reason, I'm gonna have to delay it to tomorrow, otherwise it would take a huge hit on viewership and obviously I don't want that. To an extent, I understand why they have that rule, but at the same time, when you have a channel like mine, and on a very rare occasion, I wanna double upload two days in a row, I don't think I should be penalized for doing that. Either way, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this one. As always again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.